Okay. All right. So the other um, type of problem that's in here, it kicks in right about number 31 is where it starts in the 7.1 section. They're going to ask you to define the sample size needed to estimate a proportion. And so sample size has the same symbol that it's had all along. And that is the le lowercase letter n. So lowercase letter n is always a sample size. So if in a question they said, what's the sample size necessary in order to, to estimate a proportion? Or what's the sample size necessary in order to answer, estimate a mean? You're going to be looking for an n equals formula. And the one for the proportion is going to scream to you, I'm the one for the proportions because it's going to have p's and q's in it. And the one that's for the mean is going to scream to you because it's not going to have p's and q's in it. And it's really only those two things. And so the formula that we're going to use looks like this. It's a z alpha over 2. It's squared. And that's being multiplied by p hat times, oops, times q hat all over the E squared. So that E does stand for error. So in the problem, there'll be a desired error as well. So I think we know some things. Um, Z alpha over 2 is going to be given by the table A2 and is based upon a stated confidence level. And that will be in the problem. If there's never a state, of, if there's, you're ever in a situation where there's not a stated confidence interval or level, they will use 95 and 95% since that's standard. E does stand for the error, and that will be given in the problem. They'll tell you how close they want to be, and you'll see that happening. So we know those two. So the strange thing is this p hat and q hat. Those are what you think they are. They're sample propor proportions and then one minus that sample proportion. So there's two things that can happen. I typed them up above. Either they've referred to a prior study and we just dropped those numbers in. So for example, they may say the the last time we looked at it, um, we had a 40% success rate. Well, that would mean p hat is equal to 0 0.40, and q hat's not arbitrary. It's 1 minus 0 0.40, so 0 0.60. And so we would drop those numbers in, but again, in the wording, they would say a prior study. Now, the second case is still visible on the top of the screen. There's no prior study known. If there's no prior study known, let me just recopy that formula. If there's no prior study known, then what goes in for p hat and q hat is the biggest they could ever be, the biggest that product at least could ever be. If, if you don't have a prior study, so I'll put no prior study. If you don't have anything to put in for p hat, then you're going to let p hat be 0.5, and then q hat would also by default be 0.5. 0.5 times 0.5 is the biggest p hat times q hat can ever be. And so therefore, you're going to talk to the most amount of people. So they're good with that. It's kind of the worst case scenario. So if, you're not, if no prior studies referred to, they're going to use 0.5 times 0.5. Or some books will say, and maybe ours too, that p hat times q hat would be 0.5 times 0.5 and they'll skip that and go straight to the fact that it's 0.25 and tell you to throw it in there. So that's the basics of what we're going to be doing. As we go to these problems, we're going to be asked to um, find a sample size and we're either going to have a prior study to refer to so that we know numbers to drop in here or we're not going to be given a prior study and we'll know exactly what to put in there. 0.5.5 that won't even be in the problem. All right, so you'll watch this happen as we do some other examples, but I just wanted to give you the basics of it first.